The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Typebond. Well, before we get started today, I wanted to let you know that we have a new mug. It's stainless steel with a synthetic cork bottom on it. Uh, this is just a sample. Ours is going to be black. It says Woodworker Fuel on there, which stands for something. You want to read the fine print to find out what that means. But it's available at TWWStore.com. Get your pre-order in. And hey, look, I know you're busy. You got things to do. I don't want to waste your time any more than I have to. If you stain your woodworking projects, there's a good chance you've confronted a phenomenon known as blotch or splotch. Basically, it's when you put the stain on the surface and you see a very uneven level of absorption. Some areas absorb more, some areas end up being lighter in color. And that's what we have here in this example. You can see a very light area here around the knot and much darker areas on both sides. Now that unevenness is usually due to, to two things. It's grain direction, so if the grain direction in the board kind of changes up, one area might suck in more color than the others. It also happens just due to natural properties in the woods. Softer woods tend to be worse at this, but you may have a section that's more dense than another section, and the, the less dense stuff tends to be more like a sponge, and it pulls that color in. Either way, you get this kind of weird, uneven, you know, splotch pattern that I personally don't think looks good. Now, other people do think it looks good because this is sort of the heart of a rustic looking piece of furniture, right? So if you want that rustic look, you welcome this blotch and splotch. But if you don't want that, you're gonna try to find ways to prevent it. Now, there's something closely related to blotch, kind of the same thing. I like to call it blotching with style. Uh, and that's something called figure. Now, here's a piece of maple. Uh, it's curly maple, and you can see it's got that striped pattern. What's happening here is grain direction changes. The grain is kind of wavy, so it goes down and up, and everywhere it goes up, it's a little bit more like end grain. So it's thirstier, it will absorb more color in those areas, and you get this beautiful striped pattern. I think that looks super cool because it's very purposeful and it's repeated and it's a beautiful pattern. When we look at a piece that's blotchy, it's random. And I think the randomness is what, what makes me not like it so much. So woods that are notorious for blotching, I'll just name a few here. Alder, cherry, maple, birch, poplar, and pine, just to name a few. Pine happens to be one of the worst ones and that is the subject of most of our tests we're gonna to run today, we're gonna to use pine. So how do we prevent blotch from occurring? Well, woodworkers have all kinds of different tricks for preventing blotch, uh, but they all kind of operate on the same principle. And let me show you with a drawing. So let's say this is the surface of our board. We may have an area here that's really soft, so it's gonna absorb more color. Then we have an area over here where the grain just kind of changes directions a few times. So uh, maybe on this spot here, it's thirstier. Think of it as straws pointed upward, so it's gonna absorb more finish there. So when you put the stain on here, this is what causes that uneven absorption. So when we do a blotch prevention, what we're trying to do is even out the absorption across the surface. So there's a couple tactics for doing that. One is to sort of preload these areas with something, let's say like mineral spirits. You just kind of pour that stuff in there and it's gonna pre-fill all these thirsty spots so that when you come in with your stain, you just don't absorb as much. There's not as much room to absorb because these are filled at that point. Another method is to put some kind of a film forming finish on the surface, something that will sort of seal the surface and that sealer goes down in there and blocks them up a little bit. We're not totally sealing the surface, but just enough to kind of even things out. And you get mixed results with that as we'll see, but that's definitely a tried and true way to help prevent blotch. And this is a terrible drawing. So here are a few traditional ways that woodworkers keep blotch at bay. Sand to a high grit. This tends to crush the wood fibers and block them off to some degree. We use this trick all the time to help end grain not be so thirsty, but as you can see, the results are not exactly predictable. That said, you can actually use the high grit sanding in conjunction with any of the other treatments we talk about here, and that can help you get even better results. A classic method that I've used many times and have written articles about is diluted shellac. The shellac partially seals the surface and definitely helps prevent blotching. But in doing so, it also prevents the finish from absorbing in general, and you can easily end up with a color that isn't quite what you expected. You can use the finish itself. A heavily diluted finish solution can be used as a pre-coat for the surface, and it will partially seal the fibers. But much like shellac, it can be tricky to control.
If you're using an oil-based stain, you can quickly douse the surface with mineral spirits, which fills the grain and the pores with a clear liquid, making them less anxious to absorb the colored stain. It works, but other options work better. You can use a commercial conditioner. They come in water and oil-based varieties, and they do work, but I've had mixed results with them. Now, the best one that I've tried is made by the late and great Charles Neal. He passed away a couple of years ago. I hear mixed things about whether or not they're still taking orders on their website, but it's still up, so if you want to try ordering some, go for it. A somewhat more advanced way to prevent blotch is to spray the finish with some color in it, sort of like a toner. Each coat builds up color, and it stays on the surface and doesn't actually absorb too deep into the wood fibers. So if the color can't absorb, it can't blotch. Now another classic woodworker trick is to use, believe it or not, glue. If you take regular wood glue and dilute it heavily with water, you create something that's called glue size. The solution works a lot like diluted finish, in theory. But in practice, the results are actually a lot better. Glue size not only prevents blotch, but also allows the color to penetrate so that we're getting a pretty true representation of the stain. And glue size is where we're going to start with this formula, but I'm also going to add a second thing, which is one of the other things we talked about, and that's diluted finish. Right, so here is what I'm calling the starting point for the formula. First, I add three tablespoons of glue. I'm using Type Bond Original, but I think any simple woodworking glue will work. Then I add three tablespoons of water-based finish. I'm using general finishes, but I'm pretty sure any brand will do. Now bring that up to a quart with water. And just to make things as uncomfortable as possible, I'm going to call this stuff Mark Juice. Here it is, pour it on your cereal. Now I called this a starting point for the recipe because you could really change the quantities here. Uh, play with them a little bit. I mean, every wood is different, every finish is different. So this formulation could definitely change and it could impact the results. Just have some fun with it. Now I certainly haven't used this on every different species and I've only used it a, a few different times, but when I do use it, it does seem to be the most consistent and the results are the most predictable with this, which is why I really like it. Now, if you're wondering if the addition of that water-based finish actually makes a difference, well, I can assure you it does. We tested it quite a bit. We ran a lot of side-by-side -side tests and every single time, the solution with the finish added produces slightly better results. Not dramatic, but enough to say that it's worth adding it. In this example, we have an alder board with my new formula on the left and glue size on the right. You can see a lot more blotch around those little knot areas. Now you think that's unfair because of those knots? Well, here's the other side of the board with the solutions reversed. As you can see, the new formula dramatically tones down the blotching around the knots. Now keep in mind, I'm not claiming that this stuff is a miracle solution, that it's gonna work in every, every possible scenario you can come up with. I'm just saying that in my testing, it is the most consistent and seems to work the best in the most different situations, if that makes sense. Now we're gonna do some comparative analysis here. And one of the challenges with this is if you just chop a board up into pieces, just moving 12 inches on the same board could result in a board that acts very differently than the piece that was below it. So what we're gonna do is take the same board and after each test, we're gonna clean it off and start over fresh, but we're still on the same board. So even though we're going a little bit deeper in the grain, it should be a pretty close approximation each time. So it's almost like we're doing the same board, but it should give us a lot of information. So for this test, we're really gonna focus on the most common blotch remedies. First, you can see what the raw wood does when it's hit with the stain. I mean, to each his own, but I think that looks like a hot pile of duty. So I'll remove as little wood as possible to remove the stain and then sand back up to 220 grit. Next, we'll use the commercial pre-stain conditioner. I'll follow the instructions by applying liberally, letting it soak in, and then wiping off the excess and waiting 30 minutes before staining. Definitely an improvement over the raw board. Next, let's repeat the cleanup process and try shellac. It's a super thin cut of shellac that gets applied to the surface and is left to dry. Once dry, the surface is sanded lightly to remove the raised grain with 320 grit, and then we apply the stain. Again, much better than a raw board, but pretty light overall. And I know some of you old school guys like using mineral spirits, so let's test that. Again, an improvement over the raw board, but I think we can do better. 
And finally, let's try my stuff. Mark juice. I apply it to the surface, let it soak in, and I don't wipe off the excess. I just let it dry, and then sand the surface lightly with 320 grit to remove the raised grain. And now for the stain. It looks pretty decent, but this pine stuff is stubborn. Now instead of working from memory, let's put up all the samples at the same time so that you can judge for yourself. As you can see, nothing is perfect, and this particular board is a big ask for all of these blotch preventatives. But let me tell you what I see here. All of the samples have issues around this knot. They all have a dark spot, but if you look at the sample with my solution, that dark spot appears a little bit larger, but it's not quite as intensely colored. So that's interesting. Now if you look here, you'll see the other three options had trouble with this area. It just kind of looks dirty, but on my sample, the appearance is pretty consistent from one side to the other. Another thing to notice is that the grain patterns in the first three samples show a pretty significant contrast with darker areas and then much lighter cathedral patterns. On my sample, at least to my eye, the difference looks like it's toned down just a bit. And just so you can see a whole bunch of sample boards that I made previously, these are just a bunch of the classic remedies. And then here are several boards where we use my formula. And I think you could see overall that the ones with my formula are more consistent and even from board to board. Now it may seem like at this point that I'm just trying to create the argument that this is better than the other stuff, right? And I do believe it is. I've already made that decision. So the real point of this video was to see how well this stuff works with different stains. So here's the test we're going to run. Now, it's really a pain in the butt to take photos and kind of work your way down like we did on that last board. A cool way that I think might really help us to have a fair test here is we're going to have a treated and a non-treated board, and we're going to compare the two. This is derived from a single piece of three-quarter inch stock that we resaw in half. And then when you fold it open, those two surfaces are about as close as we can get to the same board. So we'll have one that's treated and one that's untreated, and we'll use various different stain products to see what they look like. For the sample boards, we used water-based stain, an oil-based stain, a water-soluble transtint dye, a premixed water-based dye, a gel stain, and a clear oil just for fun. To make it easier to see what's actually happening on the surface, I sprayed a very light coat of lacquer onto each board. So let's take a look. Now the tried and true oil doesn't really show us a lot, but I do see this area around the knot that appears a little bit darker in the raw sample, the untreated sample, and it's more subdued on the treated side. The regular oil-based stain, uh, that's the one we've been using in this whole video so far, well there's clearly a change in the, the properties of that little strip on the left-hand side of the untreated board. The area around the knots is uh, also very pronounced. On the treated sample, you can see that the knots are much less pronounced and we no longer see that strip. But overall, you should also notice that the color is just a little bit less intense, but not too bad. For the water-based stain, we see similar differences. The treated board has much less noticeable knots, and the untreated board is showing some interesting dark areas. Because of the way that these lines run, I'm actually going to say that this is probably a flaw in our sanding. Also notice that the right board is upside down, because we're not very smart. The oil-based gel stain kind of surprised me. Normally gel stains are the ideal solution for blotch-prone woods as they really don't absorb as deep as typical stains, but I don't really see a huge difference between these two boards. But if you look closely, you can see more dark embedded color that kind of just looks a little dirty on the left-hand side of the untreated board. You might also notice these two dark streaks which actually appear as light streaks on the treated board. That's interesting. For the water-based transtint dye, there's a really significant difference. Look at how the untreated board essentially has these two dark areas that are bookending or sandwiching that lighter area in the middle. The treated board looks dramatically cleaner while not really sacrificing the desired color. Now here's General Finish's dye stain, and another surprise. The treated board looks better, no doubt, but not as good as I expected it to be. By the way, this is where testing comes in. If you're doing this kind of work in your shop, you'll want to test your finishing strategy on scrap first and then adjust accordingly. On the boards that showed me just a little more blotch than I'd like, I'd probably increase the amount of glue in my mix and then run another sample. The goal being that we find the sweet spot between preventing blotch and preventing the color from penetrating. 
But if you look at the boards on the whole, it's pretty clear that the top row just looks better, and we haven't really sacrificed much in the way of desired color. So as you can see, this is a process that takes a little bit of experimentation, and experience counts for a lot. If you have a wood you work with all the time and a stain you work with all the time, you can get this formula really dialed in. And honestly, my point here wasn't to disparage other methods and other materials. It was just to show you that something that you don't really even have to buy because you already have the stuff in your shop, a DIY recipe actually gets you results that are just as good and honestly, in my opinion, better than what you can get with other things out there. Your mileage may vary. So have fun with this recipe. Um, you know, use the comments to let me know things that you've tried that have worked really well. Uh, and if you mess with the recipe a little bit and you get something that works better, let me know about it. I want to hear about it. All right. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. And glue size is where we're going to begin for my... <clears throat> we'll get this. I got only three sentences and I can't get it out. Okay. Now I haven't, I, my memory on this, this is why I could never be like on anything professional, right? Cause oh, I can't yeah. memorize for shit. So as you can see, nothing is a, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> so as you can see, nothing is really a magic bullet for blotch. Uh, it's gonna take a little bit of experimentation and this is uh... a, <laughs>